Welcome to the ESR RWB Super Series, or is it RWB ESR Super Series? I don't remember which one was first. We're Either at Paul, <laughs> we're at Paul Ricard for the fourth round, or is this the fifth round? It's a good question. Uh, I think it's the fourth. I believe it's the fourth. I want to say fourth because we did we did Spa, we did Nurburgring, and we did Suzuka. No, it's the fifth because Silverstone. Yeah, I missed Silverstone. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So my fourth, but fifth overall. There we go. And uh, with me on commentary is from RWB, RWB Charger. Good evening. And Byron will return for Tier 3, which is apparently very wet, and apparently there's a car on its roof at some point. So we, we figured Byron would enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I saw the screenshot. That looked quite funny. So we're here in qualifying, rounding off here at Paul Ricard. Geeks are on pole for GT3 at the moment from Tazaro. I'm going to go with that pronunciation. Andrew Anderson, Xavier Eugenie, and Damian Wilk. I don't know why, but I feel like I know Damian Wilk from somewhere. Like, the name rings a bell. And it's not a good bell, but from what I've like, encountered him then, <laughs> he seems like a good guy, so I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. He's uh, he's quite active. He's one of our race organizers. He's actually Damian. Um, uh, he, uh, he's quite active on some of the sim racing groups. You might have seen him. Um, he does promote RWB quite a bit as well, and he runs his own Tuesday race. I assume it's got to be that I've met someone with like a very similar name who was a dickbag or something. That's that's what I'm going to go with. No, no, he's a nice guy. He's from the UK. Well, he's originally uh, Polish. I think he's from mm -hmm. the UK. And then in the GT4 field, we got Menacing Skull, James Butler, despite that. I really wouldn't have thought that Janetta would be all that competitive here, because it just should die on the Mistral Strait, but... Uh, up in second place there with John Barker third, Martin Edmonds in fourth, and yourself, RWB Charger, in fifth place. Yeah, I didn't last long. I had to Wait. dock out half. Spoilers! <laughs> Sorry. I <laughs> uh, got a new face. Is Mar Martin Martin Pater is a new face. Is he, am I correct in saying that? I believe he's uh, new to the series. He's new to the series. He does race with us. Uh, on some of the other, you know, some of the other events we've done, but yeah, he's. I think it was his first time last night. Uh, he did the stint tearing and and got into tier two. So yeah, he's good. He's a good racer. Mm -hmm. So we'll look forward to seeing him in the race. Although there's a considerable drop off there between you and Martin. There, what is, it's like what three and a half seconds. It's pretty nasty. Uh, Martin sent me a message last night. Is it okay if I don't qualify? Because he was very nervous. On I think it's possibly his first league race, and I just said it's fine. You know, I don't really qualify. Well, I, I meant the I meant okay. the I meant the other Martin. You're you're quite a ways behind, Mr. Martin Edmonds. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean I didn't really qualify. I just um, set the uh, tire pressures in the fuel. Right. I don't really bother qualifying really. I just I like going through the pack. I enjoy that See. pack racing. I see Martin has still put the names on, which some people don't like, some people do like. I'll have to give him a smack. Um, <laughs> so we're just finishing up here. Ship the last laps here with about 30 seconds to go. So this will be Gixer's last chance to better his time. He's less than a tenth ahead of both uh, Tazaro and uh, Van Doren Mollen. So very, very tight at the top. Wilk's back there, one, two, six. Two tenths back, or uh, Anderson now put a dead even time with Doran mauling up. So it is a tie for third place, but uh, either the game is tracking more than three decimal places, or we have a tie and it just gave it to Van Doran mauling for setting the time first. Uh, not sure which it is. So Wilk fifth, Kenny sixth, RWB Crookie still out there. Uh, Gix is still out there. Menacing Skull. Why are the two pole sitters pushing like, to the right? Yeah, guys, you got pole already. Relax. Enjoy. <laughs> I think they just like to eke out a few tents, don't they? You know, trying to better themselves. I mean, I could see... Well, I mean, I could see from both points of view, because there is a GT4 and a GT3 still out there trying to take pole. Uh, Crookie and uh, Kelleher. So, there is... Oh, there we are. Crookie's in the pits. So the GT3 field is set. It's going to be Gixer, Tazaro, Van Doren, Mullen, Anderson, Wilk, Kenny, Eugenie, Crookie, 
and Brahosa and Magus top 10, and uh, we got cut off here before I could get to the GT3, so hopefully, there we go, for the GT4s. Menacing Skull, James Butler, John Barker, Martin Edmonds in fourth, RWB Charger, Martin Pater, and it's Dale Kelleher, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, I remember names sometimes. <laughs> Uh, there's so many new names that I, I forget. I mean, uh, actually, a lot of those in there are, are RWB. I think there's a couple of your guys in there as well. But Let's see. The, the ESR uh, contingent is, assuming that there are not people that we are both claiming, uh, Andrew Anderson, Sean Kenny, Xavier Eugenie, uh, myself, and then in the GT4 field, it is Butler, Barker, and Edmonds. Yeah. That's a good, good split. Zara with the half ass custom livery. I see. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't actually get to see these liveries when I'm driving. So uh, I'd be interested to see them. Uh, I, have. I think most of the tier two liveries are not full customs. I think they're just in game custom. They're just in game blanks. Because uh, like you see Tazaro's there has no sponsors on it whatsoever so it it would appear to be a in-game custom same with um uh wilk as well and uh andrew anderson of course is is uh, i know that his is just an in-game custom it's just the our motorsports car with instead of blue it has green that's and and black instead of like uh gunmetal gray I think the uh, limit of the size has kind of kept people from really venturing into like super um, complicated works of art. Yeah, it can cause major issues if you've got. Oh, for it. sure, for sure. We, yeah. we 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 allow full customs on Wednesdays, but I'm uh, I think in the future I'm gonna have to put up a rule where it's like if you want to use a full custom, you got to be here like the first five minutes of practice, because of course it it spikes people uh, with like it basically feels like a lag spike that you're being hit with when the guy joins. Because yeah, your your yeah. game is rendering these this this lovely car, and they and they can look very very lovely, uh, and it opens up all kinds of doors. But it is there is definitely a downside to to the way Kuno says uh, has implemented the custom livery system. Yeah, I wish I think it, we, we we limit them to now to two hundred KBs, and I think it, it mitigates that uh, that stutter. Mm -hmm. Smaller file, less to render. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed even the in-game customs produce a little stutter. Like, it's, it's barely noticeable stutter. But even when they come in, there's just, there's a little bit. I think every online in every online sim that I've ever raced has had a minor stutter when someone leaves or arrives, you know. Um, R Factor, I think, is the best one at doing it because I think something uh, R Factor... Uh, will not load a custom car until you're in the pits. So you have to pit. No, it gives you the pit. yellow box, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And then you get then you get it later. So like the timing is better. You still have the lag, but you get to you don't get it mid turn, basically. <laughs> so here we are on the approach to the start finish line. Paul Ricard is one of the nastier ends to a uh, to a track for the rolling start, I think. Just just the construction of the track. Here we go. We're waiting for the green light. And Gixer will lead us away. We are riding with the Baba Ganoush. And we are off. Go, go, go. Oh. Big, uh, really big, big gap there big that gap, I left uh, in yeah. there. Huh. I don't remember it being that big. Although, of course, the fact that my pedals are not behaving is totally my excuse. <laughs> Well, you did well with dodgy pedals. Ugh, the pedals are, are the bane of my existence right now. Uh, so Stang has gotten ahead of the Baba Ganoush, by the looks of it, into 11th place with his lovely anime livery. And it is, uh, it's saying Van Doren Mullins in first place, but I'd like to see a... Um, Frankly, a confirmation of that before I uh, 
I utter it as fact because I know on the first la on the first little bit the uh, position chart can be a bit dodgy. So he might be in the lead. That's Did sexy start push. Yeah, it's not bad. I like it. RWB Charger running in was that one, two, three, fourth place in the GT4 field. I wish they gave you um, a class position on the overlay here. That would be, I think, ideal. Instead of making me have to calculate where the GT4s are <laughs> in terms of their class. Staying under pressure from Baba Ganoush. And Reynolds in the background. It's a very dark wheels that... that uh, there. Oh, Edmonds has made a move on Menacing Skull, or Skull has made a failed move on Edmonds. Not sure which. I think the former. Squeeze on Skull there, isn't it? Looks like Edmonds has got the lead of... Oh, there's a little squeeze. Oh, oh, chickened out. Skull's got it back, but the inside will go to Edmonds. He remains ahead for now, or not really. No. no. Skull takes it. So Menacing Skull in the flashback racing Mercedes takes it, taking the GT4 lead. Yeah, the speed of that uh, Mercedes uh, Skull was saying to me was 162 miles an hour down the straight, which was quite a lot more than some of the other cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a great deal of uh, front straight line speed differential in the GT4 category that doesn't really exist in the GT3 category. It's a little bit more parity. And it does look like Van Doren Mullen has, from third on the grid, taken the lead. So, a uh, chest thump to him. Because I'm using push to talk and I can't clap. So, <laughs> everyone gets chest thump instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of a clap. <laughs> instead of a round of applause. So, it is uh, Van Doren Mullen, Gixer, Tesaro, Anderson, Kenny, your top five in the GT3 category. Uh, Wilk has come off pretty poorly. I thought he started on, he started on row two, I want to say. He's back to seventh place. So he's been roughed up a little bit. I'm sure he won't mind that too much. I mean, it just gives him the excitement of the comeback. Yeah. He's, he's pretty good. He's pretty consistent. So, uh, Skull's already put 1.3 seconds between him and Martin Edmonds, so... Pedal to the metal and uh, looking to secure himself the victory, although early days yet, 56 plus minutes to go. I'm a little surprised to see Gixer up there in the Porsche, to be honest, because with the with the BOP adjustments, I didn't think the Porsche 911 would be particularly strong here, to be honest. I don't really think they bopped it too badly, to be honest. A, a lot of people were using it. I don't think they are now. It's the Audi, I think, is, seems to be the favourite. It? It's just weird. In ESR, the Audi seems to get all this hate. Like, we never have Audis. We, if you look at our Wednesday grid, no Audis. You look at our Sunday grid, there were no Audis for most of the season. Uh, Marco Dam joined for the last race in an Audi. But, like, I don't think we ever had more than two on the grid. It's uh, It's weird. I like the car. I just can't find anyone to run it with me. <laughs> yeah, I think this league started before the pop, didn't it? Just it did. Ends. It did. Yeah. Well, I think the Audi was always quite strong. I, I don't. I don't think it's like the the BOP has really brought it into the forefront necessarily. It's just I think the BOP has kind of like strangled the Porsche a l little bit because I think the Porsche was a a tad overpowered before the bop. Well. Overpowered in the sense of how fast it could be, but of course the Porsche is also one of the harder ones to handle, so you you did have that element to it as well. Yeah, there was another club that ran a, a, a league, and I think they had about 200 people in it, and 75% of the field were in Porsches. Yeah, there's always that, though. I mean, when we our, our Sunday series had a lot of Porsches in it to start. Ooh, somebody off the track there. I am trying to ascertain... It's Tesaro. And I think that's Gixer in the background. So have Tesaro and Gixer come to blows and fallen down the order. And if so, that's great news for Van Dorenmalen. Just 
waiting for a timing line here to get an update on the positions here. Yeah, it was! they both fallen down the order. Anderson's up to second place. RWB Crookie in third. Then it's Sean Kenny, Wilk, Ambrahosa, Eugenie, Magus, Tizarro, Baba Ganoush, Stang. Gixer's back in 12th place. So, bit of a shame we didn't get that caught on camera. I would have uh, liked to know. We've lost a car somewhere. We're down to 20 participants. Um, Reynolds, I think, is missing. And a very slow-moving Jake Stang. Yeah, I was just wondering what he was doing there. Did he go off track? Or? I think he went off track, but it still seems like he's really slow. Also looked like he hit something. Uh, one of the, like, you know, the little uh, turn markers or something. Because something flew up off of, off of his car. So maybe some damage? Possible puncture murder? Looks like he's doing okay now, but he has dropped behind Baba Ganoush and Gixer by a fair margin. So this is going to be interesting because ninth and 10th place are the two fastest cars in the field, at least according to qualifying. Whoa, Jake Stang killing some pylons. You're not Tom Laws, sir. You don't get to do that. Those who do not know the Tom Laws joke, we have a guy in ESR who has like a pathological hate for pylons and will kill them. <laughs> I find this attack very, very difficult. I don't know what it is, but um, it just it doesn't it doesn't compute with my driving style. I think there's a couple of things. I think there's the general lack of like uh, visual reference points on the track because the track is very in the middle of a car park, surrounded by blue and red lines everywhere. So there's no. Um, I think it's really easy to get lost where you are on the track. I guess like I'll be approaching a turn. And I'll get on the brakes and be like, wait, wait, wait. I don't have to brake for that one all that hard. That's the one I need to brake hard for. <laughs> yeah, it's the last section, isn't it? It's a bit weird. Yeah. You, yeah, some of those corners you get mixed up. Yeah, so there's definitely that. And... Um... And it's a really, diff it's a really difficult technical track. I mean, Paul Ricard is a... Um, a test track dream basically because there's no limitations to what you can do like there's no uh like most racetracks take a certain level of character from the area they're built from like for example eau rouge is a river in at spa frickershaw and as a result the the track flows kind of according to the hills and the the valleys of the of the area and paul ricard is just flat so you get this kind of like bizarrely designed track. Somebody whacked up. Oh, I think Pater got in the back of Kelleher there a little bit. Didn't take advantage, so I wouldn't say there's anything there, but it did look like there was a little kiss. Kelleher in the Aston Martin. Pater in the. Uh, oh, drive through penalty for Kelleher. So that might have been him that hit the. Uh, that hit the. Um, the uh, limit marker. There's the word I'm looking for. And picked himself up a drive through penalty because it's very easy in that first turn to get a drive through if you cut the track. The one I got a couple on was the, the last turn, uh, the last corner before the last turn, cutting it too, too tight before the last turn. Can't couple... say that I really ever do that. I've gone wide there before, but I don't think I ever really cut it too hard. Mind you, that. That, that probably means I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's that Porsche tends to oversteer a bit around that corner, the back end slides around, so you end up running on the, the left-hand side of the curb. Is Butler running? I just, I'm just realizing I've not seen a gap to him the whole, the whole race. Problems for the Janetta? That would be very disappointing. He uh, a... he did say something actually that I, I'm not sure if he had a false start or he, he couldn't start. Hmm. We'll yeah, have to see. I wonder where he was. We'll have to see. Oh, there it is. He's 28 seconds back, so he's just way behind. Okay, but he is running at least. So there is that. Tazaro versus Magus here, battle for seventh place. Uh, looks like they both overtook 
uh, Xavier Eugenie at some point. Did not catch that on camera. And they head towards, don't ask me for corner names on this track. I, I, I know none of them. But anyways, we're, he we're at the end of the Mistral Straight. I think into this fast uh, left-hander here, or right-hander, and Tizarro is going to take the spot. Looks like Magus gave up on that one fairly easily. And we also have a battle here between Kelleher and Pater. And you know Pater wants to get past him because he's got that drive-through penalty, so... Wasting any time behind Kelleher doesn't really make any sense. Looks like he has got the position. Uh, in the Mercedes. Oh, Kelleher very off the track. Kelleher killing another pylon. <laughs> Mercedes versus Aston Martin. Two very similar cars. Yeah, I was just trying to work out the quarter names, actually. I know that's the Mistral Straight, though, but... It's the only one I have any idea on. Any I think idea the next, whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, the next corner is called Corp Des Designs. The big sweeper. Uh, Jake Stang is in the pit lane. Pit window is not open, so that's a bit of an oddity. Problems for Team Anime. Kelleher is trying to get back at Pater. Uh, if I were him, I would serve my drive through penalty in the very near future just to eliminate this close contact uh, fight. As exciting as it is, um, you would think he would want to get the penalty out of the way and then get himself into some fresh air. I tend to find sometimes when you're battling with someone, it can actually pull you along. It's probably maybe taking advantage of the, the fat paces maybe quicker. Oh, at some point we have a new leader. RWB Crookie has gotten past Van Doren Mullen. This ca this cameraman needs to be fired. He's missing all the important <laughs> he's he's missing all the important events here. We've had two late lead changes and we saw neither of them. <laughs> so Van Doren Mullen is now holding up, it seems anyways. Sean Kenny or Andrew Anderson and Sean Kenny. Tazaro's up on the back of uh, Ambrosa. I assume I'm saying that correctly. Ambrosa, yeah. Okay. And uh, Tazaro and that BMW is going to be hard to stop because the BMW, uh, I don't like the car, so do not take this as endorsement. But down the Mistral Straight and the Start Finish Straight, that thing is a monster. Quite interesting actually, because Nelson's in uh, tier two, but he's uh, I think one's the uncle and one's the nephew. The other guy's in tier one, so they didn't get to wow. race together. Well, that's a shame. We should have made an exception for that. Come on. <laughs> I, wonder, I think the uncle's always saying he's faster anyway. So, I mean, if I got one of my family members to race, it would have to be my dad because no one else is racing. Uh, I would definitely want to kick his butt. Oh, of course. So it's RWB Crookie, Van Doren Mullen, Anderson Kenny Wilk, your top five in GT3. And in GT4, it is John... Ooh, John Barker is in the lead now. Okay. We had a GT4 lead change that the camera also didn't catch. The cameraman sucks. This is, this is impressive. Menacing Skull in second, Martin Edmonds, RWB Charger, and Martin Pater, your top five. Whoa! That is, uh, Stang, I think. Way off the track. He's certainly making me full use of that. Might be just getting out of the way of the blue flags, to be honest. <laughs> I hope. Because if, if that's his idea of the line, uh... That there, there is work to be done. <laughs> Looks like Keller is pitted. Yeah, that'd be for the drive-through, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's it's quite harsh this uh, track for the uh, track limit cuts. Well, it kind of has to be because because of how how grippy the off-track is. Uh, again, the you know the the racetrack in the middle of a, of a parking lot, basically, sort of. You know, 
there's Keller. Ooh, that's gonna be awkward coming out there, right in the middle of traffic. Magus and Eugenie are gonna have to get around him as well as Stang. Although technically Stang will not be given a blue flag because he is actually behind Kelleher uh, due to the uh, whatever happened at the start to Stang. Uh, if I recall correctly, he had an internet connection failure. Was was uh, was that the case? I'm not actually sure, but he's in uh, he's GC3, isn't he? Right at the back. Yeah. Well, he was in the pit lane at one point, so I, I assume, and I think he disappeared. I think he lost connection and came back and lost a couple of laps as a result as the Janetta of James Butler gets navigated there by the GT3s. GT3 versus Janetta on the Mistral Strait. That's just not even fair. <laughs> oh, Ambrosa going for a move here on Wilk. And uh, looking to try to get him between him and the fast car. He's got it! Lovely move by Very Ambrosa. Very nice move, yeah. That'll be fifth place for him for the time being. Still a pit stop to go. Of course, those who are not familiar with the regulations, the pit window will open in a, a little under three minutes. And then we'll see how the strategy part of this plays out. Or if we happen to be looking at me when I get in the pits, how badly I will miss my pit stall. Because that always happens and everyone loves it. <laughs> Except for me. <laughs> I do exactly the same thing. I'm always getting shifted forwards or backwards. It's, it's near impossible to get it right on the line. It's been better since I turned the pit marker off, but now I now I have a hard time being like, which pit stall was mine again? Nope, not that one. Nope, not that oh, one. Oh, the red, the red box. Yeah, I did yeah. the same, but when, when we did uh, endurance, it was impossible to see where you, uh, your pit board was. So I had to turn it back on, but uh, the rule of thumb, I think, is if you have about five bars on the pit mark, uh, the pit, pit board. It, ver it varies car to car is the problem. Uh, well, that's I was, the length uh, of car, yeah, I suppose. I was uh, doing a pit stop at Bathurst in my Mercedes AMG for the Sunday series, which just finished up. And I was like, all right, I knew exactly where I needed to stop in the Lexus, which was not where you need to stop at the Mercedes. <laughs> Well, the Mercedes is all body, isn't it? No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, like, this is the right spot, right? Then it dawned on me after, like, a couple of seconds. Wait. I'm thinking I'm in a Lexus. Forward? <laughs> How do you find the Lexus? I like the Lexus. I think it's a... I think it's probably the best beginner, like, introduction car to the game. Uh, myself, it's a relatively simple car to set up, um, and still be like reasonably good with it. It behaves itself fairly well. It's got a nice bit of grunt. It's pretty good on as there's RWB Charger losing a lap to RWB Crookie. As uh, Crookie's actually built himself a pretty good lead here. We we've, we've not really been talking about it because. Uh, He's not been on our on our screen to draw attention to it, but he's up to 1.5 seconds ahead of uh, Van Doren Mullen, which is not much. You can see Van Doren Mullen in the back there behind uh, Martin Pater. By the way, Kelleher has got another drive through penalty. Okay. Just noticed that. <laughs> as the blue flags once again out for Martin Pater, as well as RWB Charger, as the GT3s are coming through. But yeah, I, I like the Lexus. I recommend it. Uh, it's a little bit problematic because of a... Well, there's only two different teams in the game that run it. And of course, the in-game custom livery function does not work on the Lexus. So No, that's a licensing, a licensing issue, isn't it? Yeah. It's my go-to GT3, to be honest. I quite like it myself. There we go. It's a good safe car. I'm racing it in the uh, the uh, Wednesday 3D Speed Series right now as part of the Vortex GT Racing Team with Paul Riccobeni and Javier Perez Torres, which you can catch on commentary on this very YouTube channel that you're watching this right now. So, do that. <laughs> we will be at uh, Zolder this Wednesday for a 40-minute race. Uh, quick little sprint series because of the... Uh, the late night nature of it and of course the tremendous time 
differential between Europe and North America to make it work for everybody. It is a bit of a problem, then, isn't it? Yeah, um, it definitely it definitely hampers what you can do in terms of like more uh, more race time. Uh, somebody was talking. I don't remember who, but there was someone who was uh, recommending they they wanted longer races, and I said I had to tell them like I would love longer races, but with our grid being as spread out time zone as it is, it's just it's kind of hard to find a time where you can do more than like an hour race. Kelleher is serving his drive through penalties. Number two. Don't get another one. Come on. <laughs> oh, contact. That was Michael Magus and Martin Pater having a little bit of contact under blue flags. And that is open the door for Xavier Eugenie to zip right past Magus and into, well, maybe. They're still side by side at the first turn, but the inside line goes to Xavier. And he'll be easily able to get the BMW up ahead. By the way, Gix are in the pits, so an early pit stop there. RWB Charger, was this the end of your day at this point? Uh, it was indeed, yes. I was called away. All right. So the drinking game is now halved. Only one commentator will be referring to himself in the third person to make you drink. <laughs> so Michael Magus there behind Xavier Eugeni. Or Javier Eugenie or Xavier Eugenie. I don't know. It's weird when you have like the same group of letters can be pronounced three different ways. <laughs> it's it's a bit confusing. I think it's Xavier, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Could be Xavier. I, I know three different people who spell their name exactly like that, and it's pronounced three different ways. They they don't agree on how it's supposed to be pronounced, and. This has led me to being greatly confused for the rest of my life as to how to say that name. I suppose we'll just take the uh, the, the mutant naming of it, which is Xavier. <laughs> Xavier. Well, it depends on your cultures. I, I really should just look up how the Spanish pronounce it, because he is, he, is, he is Spanish. It's so. probably Javier. Yeah, that's what a couple of people have told me, but he's not actually... Uh, he's left me in limbo. Like He's refusing to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> it pronounce it how you feel like it Ambrahos uh, making a little mistake there as he gets off the track is instead of looking at that interesting moment we're seeing Sean Kenny overtake somebody under blue flags this race director needs to be fired it, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very disappointed I'm very disappointed right now <laughs> Baba Ganoush up into ninth place as he overtakes the pit stopping Tazaro. It's a shame they don't actually show the speed. You know, it's the speed. That would be nice. Um, I know most of the cars were, at least in GT3, were like high 270, low 280 kilometers an hour on the Mistral Straight, which was interesting. Was it a tremendous amount of difference? I also tested every GT3 around here because we did a uh, endurance race at Paul Ricard, our first ever driver swap race at ESR, and uh, it didn't go well for me. Spoiler, um, but uh, I did test out basically every car to try to figure out which one would which one would be the best on the Mistral Straight. As menacing skull going for the lead of the GT4 category against John Barker, and they've also got Amber Hosa in there as well, so that's a little bit messy. And Skull is back in the lead. He's really going for it, like Skull. He's only a young lad. Really? I yeah, I think he's, uh, even he's 18. Didn't even know. Good, good, good guy, good racer. They come in all ages, uh, which is always fun and interesting. I think the oldest sim racer I met was in his 90s. Stunning. Yeah, we've got one that's nearly 70. I think. Uh, we had a guy, I think the oldest guy in ESR that I can recall, uh, he's not with us anymore because he got, eh, got a little ragey with me and left, so, probably my fault. Um, he was 76, I think, and blind in one eye, so it was interesting to, it's interesting to figure out how he even drove. 
Because that your the depth perception would be, of course, just uh, con considerably uh, hindered. Uh, pit stops from Van Doren, Mullen, and from Wilk. So, a bit early, I would think. For a uh, pit stop. Some of them try the undercut, don't they, to try and get clean air to, you know, try and pull a little bit of a lead out. Yeah, I guess that is the problem. If you're stuck in traffic, then it's it's a different story. Um, so Van Doren Mullen's trying to undercut Crookie. We'll see if that works out. Uh, Wilk is trying to undercut Ambrahosa. Has been predominantly his battling partner. Martin Edmonds and the GT3 anime car of Jake Stang. I think it's Jake, right? It's Jake. I know it's Jake. Ooh, it's close. Um, yeah, it is Jake. I think his name's Jake uh, Tsang. He calls himself Mustang. That's more than fair. If you, had, yeah, if well, you, we had a we had a guy uh, that we, me and Byron played uh, World of Tanks with. He was Serge Stang. So he was, of course, Mustang in the game. It's 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 a legal requirement. Your your last name is Stang. You you must you must acquiesce. <laughs> So Kelleher has served his pit stop and not a drive through penalty for a change. Progress. <laughs> it's all good fun. It's all good fun, Mr. Kelleher. <laughs> Don't worry about it. There's a few laps down, isn't there? Uh, probably a lap down, I'd imagine. As Baba Ganoush makes his way through on Martin Edmonds. blue flag in the pits it is the leader rwb crookie so let's see where he comes out in relation to van doren mullen who he was battling for the lead ambrahosa is also in so that's another one see where he comes out in relation to wilk as uh, andrew anderson sean kenny xavier jenny michael magus continue on so baba ganoush into the pit lane i was having a great race with martin Edmonds last week at silverstone I saw that. Yeah, he was, I was really putting the pressure on me. I was very disappointed to miss the uh, Silverstone race, to be honest. I love that track, but uh, family calls and uh, had to make my way right. It happens. Family comes first. Yeah, Silverstone was one of my most hated tracks, believe it or not, even though it's a British track. But, really? Uh, yeah. I, it, 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 it's a bit like Paul Rickard to me now. Um, I, I just couldn't fathom it out. I think it's possibly because maybe it's something to do with flat tracks. Um, Could be. Could yeah. be. But you're I very, absolutely you're, love it. You are maybe very uh, elevation driven with your driving. Yeah, possibly. possibly. So yeah, things things of like the airfield nature would be slightly problematic. Yeah, I think it's because there's not much camber, camber corners. Mm -hmm. um, very, very flat, yeah. Yeah. So. Dang, maybe this way. I can't really say that that's my problem with Paul Ricard because like I said I like Silverstone I've had some fairly good results there but Paul Ricard I just never really can fully wrap my head around uh, although I am I am psyched if we can get some other some of the other French tracks that SRO visits like Magnicourt would be excellent additional well, that's a right track there Andrew Anderson continues to win lead for the slower than you racing team. <laughs> Sean Kenny, Xavier Jenny, Michael Magus still out there as well. And the GT4s haven't seen a lot of pit stop action. Only uh, Kelleher has served his pit stop. Oh, we didn't, or I didn't comment on it. So Crookie is out ahead of uh, Van Doren Mullen, and Ambrahosa is behind Wilkes. So one undercut worked and one undercut failed. So I guess inconclusive as to whether it was a good idea. <laughs> I tend to go the other way and, and run it long. Um, you know, especially in the GT4s because you can get towards you know at the front while everyone else is pitted. Gives you gives you that but you've got to you, you know you got to put the gt3 into the mix as well as much as you might be able to gain you're going to lose when those when they come up on you and you you know you're having to move out of the way for them 
Yeah, if you can time your pit stop to reduce the number of blue flags you have to observe or um, take advantage of, you're going to... You, that's the big winner right there in a lot of ways. Most definitely, and, yeah. And... Uh, which is why it's always situational. Um, I like to get at least a halfway, though. I, I hate that feeling of being on the inferior tires at the end of the race. Like, one lap difference is fine. But if it's, like... Like... I think I think I had like a one race like some time ago where I like pitted ten laps before the other person did, and at the end of the race like the tires were just done and I was just absolutely helpless. I don't think the tires really come into it though in an hour race, do they? Because they can last well over an hour. I, anyway. They do and they don't. I would say um, now they don't in the sense that your tires won't be completely gone or anything. Because you're right, they're they're these tires are spec'd for like two hour stints, I think. So obviously us doing a 30 minute or 20 minute or 40 minute stint is not really a thing. Uh, that being said, just because they're not done doesn't mean that there isn't a significant pace delta between a fresh set of tires and a more worn set of tires. So I think, I think regardless of race length, tire wear is always a little bit of a factor unless we're talking about something like like if we did a thirty-minute race with like with a mandatory pit stop, then then it would be completely meaningless. Yeah, yeah. I've only ever really seen uh, the issue with tire degradation when we've done the endurance. You know, we've had uh, sort of an hour and twenty minutes, uh, you know, stint times. You start mm -hmm. to feel it then. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing in here would will fill anything like that. So, in that regard, there's not much there. So, the top four is still running. We've had some pit stops from the GT4 section. John Barker and Martin Edmonds have been in. Martin Pater is in now. Uh, Dale Kelleher is back in the pits for his fourth trip to pit lane. Rough day for him. There you see the GT3 and GT4 Aston Martin side by side. That's a nice comparison. I like that shot. They do look very similar, don't they? Well, they are, they are technically the same car, just a different spec. Um, they are both VA Vantages, of course. So there is always going to be a tremendous amount of similarity uh, between the two. Same with the AMG and the Audi. Really, most of the GT4s are like really just the little brother of their GT3. Uh, just toned brother. down GT3s. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's uh, it's not a. It's not a completely different car, I guess is what I'm getting at. Same same model, basically, just different spec. Yeah. So that, that'll put Xavier Eugeni in the lead as he's going late. Typical. Xavier always goes quite late on his stints. He's uh he's more in your boat than the uh than the undercut boat. Not many people use that BMW. It's not a very good car, is why. I've never but, tried uh, it. I mean I mean, here's the thing. The BMW M6, and I'm talking real life here versus a set of course of competition for a hot second because I think that ACC with its licensing with SRO will be very close to real life in terms of performance, obviously. The M6 is a bit of a failure. One of the, one of the greater GT3 failures because, of course, it, it succeeded the Z4, which was a very successful BMW GT car. And it's gotten to the point where, like, long time BMW factory teams in real life have left BMW because they are that unhappy with the M6. So and, and and factory teams don't really change around too much. Like if you're an Audi factory team, you tend to stay Audi factory team unless something very dramatic happens because it's not it's not easy to get that relationship with another manufacturer. So to see BMW losing some of its historical teams, um, it's not a great sign. It, it, it would suggest that the teams and the drivers are kind of in agreement that the car is not very good. <laughs> Which is unusual, really, because BMW are pretty strong in motorsport, usually. You'd think so. I mean, massive budget, uh, massive company. But uh, I guess you can you can make a mistake and go down the wrong uh, developmental alley at some point.
So Eugenie's in the pit lane now. We'll see. RWB Crookie, by the way, is leaving Van Doren Mullen for dead. He's pulled out about two seconds in the last three laps. So the undercut not working in this case uh, for Van Doren Mullen. I wonder how far he is from you, Jenna. I wonder if Eugenie's pulled out any uh, lead on Crookie. I doubt it because Eugenie was down around uh, Michael Magus, who's in ninth place. So unlikely. To mm. see that, to see him get Van Doren long. So here's RWB Crookie taking the lead back. Don't see you, Jenny, coming out of the pit lane yet. So there's Van Doren Mullen. There he is coming out now. So okay, but he's he might have made up some good ground. Yes, yeah, he's, he's not second something. place or anything, but he might have a shot at like Wilk. Uh, nope, he's gonna come out behind Wilk and Amberhosa and Glixer. So not really. I guess uh, we, we kind of had a false hope there a little bit. <laughs> he wasn't as close to exiting the pits as we thought, so uh, he is more or less right where he was before the pit stops. I so just noticed his skull's gone very long, hasn't he? With his, he's, uh, with yeah, his he's, he's the last man taking his mandatory pit stop. He's, he's ripped off my tactics there. Uh, the, the GT4s seem to go longer than the GT3s in general. I wonder if you guys are maybe easier on tires or the, the whole not having to lap people enters the equation just allows you to go that much longer. Because I know um, what race, I think it was Spa, Frank or Sean, where I lost a spot before the pit stops just by going one lap too long because I ran into having to go through another blue flag that the guy I was racing with didn't have to do. And that cost me. So maybe maybe that lends itself to the long runs in the GT fours. I don't know. I'm just I'm just spitballing and throwing darts at a board right now to, to see what sticks. But that that feels like the case. I just find it very odd that people don't like the GT fours that much. You know, it's always a very skewed split, isn't it? I'm personally more of a GT three fan, but I definitely do like the GT fours. It's uh. But I guess that's the thing is when there's when there's a preference like that, it it, it might skew very quickly. People are always going to go for the faster cars, aren't they? For the superiority. Um, to me, it's not the faster car. Um, and and, and I, you're probably entirely correct. I'm just stating from my point of view. It's just I enjoy driving them more. Um, also, the uh, the guys that I was going to be racing with uh, most commonly, like historically. We're going GT3, so it yeah. makes sense. I actually get more back from the GT4 in terms of feel, to be honest. Uh, you, I could definitely see that. I mean, it's a it's a less electronically sophisticated car, so you, you would probably get more feedback. Oh, gigs are all over the back of Nelson Ambrosa. Ambrosa for sixth place, and Wilk is not too far up the road from them. Gixer, of course, had, po had pole. We don't know what happened to him early in the race. I don't remember. It was it was it was like lap three or four, but him and uh, him and uh, Tizarro went tumbling backwards. Uh, we didn't see it on camera. We just saw them off track. Don't know if it was contact between the two or um, just a very similar mistake by both. Well, Jigs is certainly pulling it back. Isn't he? Uh, Tizarro less so. He's still down in tenth place. He's gotten past Baba Ganoush and only Baba Ganoush. Well, Stang, but Stang is four laps down and not to be dismissive but uh hasn't really been in the same race as everybody else for quite some time <laughs> looks like scully's uh close. his dog in barker there mm -hmm. well, i'm surprised to see barker ahead of him that long run didn't work out for skull i don't think because he was quite a ways ahead of barker before the pit stops so barker must have gotten a good bit of clear air to uh, put some good times in when he uh I don't even know if he really went for the undercut because he pitted relatively late, but the effective undercut has put him back in the lead. So, yeah. Haven't talked a lot about the GT3 and 4, so let's hit him up. John Barker leading the way from Skull. Martin Edmonds. Uh, Martin Pater. James Butler. And then it is... We've lost Kelleher, so it's... Down, and so, yeah, we're, we're down to only... Uh, only five... GT4 is left. 
I should have stayed in. I might have had a podium. Might have, but I mean, admin duties and everything. I, I, I probably would have stayed in, but uh, I've also never been presented with the uh, the problem that you were presented with. Yeah. And uh, I won't share any more than that. <laughs> Crookie pull, uh, Crookie lost about six tenths of a second last time around to uh, Van Doren Mall, and so uh, Piet, I believe, is his first name. Might be on a little bit of a charge. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Race is not over with 18 and a half minutes still to go. Plenty of time if he can if he can catch at that rate. And the battle for GT4 supremacy continues between Barker and Skull with. Uh, Jake Stang getting a front row uh, seat to this. The third car in line here is not in this race. It is a GT3. So, interesting to see how that interacts. And Skull is going for it into turn one. And Barker does not close the door. So, menacing Skull back to the front. I'm wondering why Stang isn't overtaking the GT4s. He didn't seem to be attacking them at all. If I recall correctly, giving a spoiler for the after race, uh, I think he was trying to farm safety rating. Oh. By staying close to the GT4. Well, staying close to just whomever to pick up the uh, safety rating. I some of the G some of the GT4s were a little bit. Um, weirded out by it <laughs> I guess it's, it's the best way to put it would Surely be very easy way to, to farm safety right it's just race the AI isn't it um I mean it depends on how well you can race the AI um I mean the easiest way to farm safety rating is to be safe <laughs> well this is true yeah, I, I've never I, I don't even look at mine I think it's stuck on 99 um, I don't put a ton of stock into the ACC ratings just because I find some of them are not particularly not well relevant. constructed. Yeah. Like, I, like car control is a good example of this. Like, my car control will go like has like a 20 point bend to it, like depending on what track I'm on. So like I'll, if I if I load on the game and let's say I've forgotten what track I was racing last. I'll be able to remember what it was just by popping into my car control and going, oh, my car control is bad. It was Misano, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it depends on the car as well. I, I don't Too. use the, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if you've uh, ever used the, um, the little green bars that show you your corner entry and exits, and it tells you good, very good, slow, crap, mm -hmm. and your shit. Um, I have that up now, it's, it's quite handy to get to, you know, how you can attack a corner. Mm. I've used it before. I just also find that sometimes it's... I don't know, their definition of, like, out of control is very stingy. Subjective, so, yeah. yeah. Where I actually, yeah, you, you go through a corner and think, oh, I really, I went through there like a boss. What it is... You're Kixer was flashing his headlights there. I was trying to figure out what for. Maybe Pater was being a little bit... Uh, on account of anything under blue flags? Uh, maybe, I, I don't know. No fucking flashing. <laughs> <laughs> read the read the rule. Oh, drive through penalty for Piet Van Doren Mullen. That might have been up there for a while and I just didn't notice it, but he's, he's also dropped to fourth place. So I want to say that might be a drive through penalty for a track cut that wasn't really a track cut. If you got to get, get my drifts because he's dropped two spots. There is the race leader, RWB Crookie, who is coming up to... S oh, that Ooh. was a little sketchy. I think Stang actually probably... Yeah. Wow, what's he doing there? Is that, is that lag? Might be lag. Might his, be. his ping's quite low. It's only, well, yeah, but it could be packet loss as well. True, true. So, so there's, there, there, there's, there's options. But that, that was a little... That would, uh, that would maybe cause me to, to take a poop. <laughs> yes, it would be a pucker up moment. 
So Gixer has cruised up to the back of Nelson Ambrahosa and has not managed to find a way past him. Still in seventh place. Xavier Eugenie is on their tail, and he, uh, to my naked eye, it looks like Eugenie is getting closer to them, but I could be mistaken, so I'll have to keep an eye on the, on the, uh, the Delta there. Oh, little wide! Okay, I was going to say, Gix, Gix are not close enough to do anything with that, but uh, that might have been inviting as Dor Van Doren Mullen goes to serve his drive through penalty. I don't get that Ferrari, you know, the way it drives. I can't drive that thing. It, it, it rotates on every corner. I just. Are you. Like, is it like a generic mid engined problem, or, or is it, it specific? Could well be. It could well be. It could be my braking style. I'm very hard on the brakes, you know, hard into a corner on the brakes. I can relate. Front engines are definitely my thing. That's the, the only mid-engine car that I really find I, I, I groove with is the Audi. Anything else is um, not undrivable or anything, but definitely not me, not me playing to my strengths, I guess. So, like, I, I'm most comfortable in a, a Lexus or a, or a Nissan or a, uh, even the Bentley, although I, the, the right-hand drive is a little bit off-putting, <laughs> being a Canadian. Yeah, it quite suits me. I, I don't actually, I, you know, I drive them now. I don't even think about the left-right-hand drive thing. But I suppose if you normally drive left-hand drive, yeah, it would be a bit odd. It's becoming less of a thing, but it, it, when I first tried to drive a Bentley in a uh, race room racing experience, it was it was a very it was a very off putting moment. <laughs> but it has it has gotten better since. It's the correct side. I mean, we came up with the car, so I disagree. <laughs> Michael Magus and Tizaro. So it looks like Tizaro just got around Magus. So the BMW passed the Lexus. A little bit of odd body language there. I wonder if there was some, maybe a little packet loss. John Barker looking back at... Uh, that is Stang in his rear view. So that's a GT3. And Stang is moving quite slowly on that straightaway because Andrew Anderson just, uh, just deaded him in the Aston Martin. Amber Host is up to fifth place, started in ninth, so he's having a really solid day. Gixer is still on his tail, but still doesn't really seem to have the pace to get past him. And I was saying that Eugenie was getting closer. It doesn't look like it. Eugenie's actually dropped about three tenths on them, so might might have been a bit of a false alarm, or maybe now that they're not so close together, they're uh, they're able to put up a little bit better lap times. Come on, Stan. Go past the GT4. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's actually passed him. He has passed him, yes. Sean Kenny is shown as directly side by side with Andrew Anderson. So if we could get the camera over there, we'd be appreciated. Can, can we get the camera over there, race director? Come on. We have a 0.000 gap, and you're not showing me it. Come right, on. Showing the, showing the car behind, but not the one in front. <laughs> That's uh, Dan Tazaro up to eighth place. Bit of a disappointing run for him. He started on the front row. Gixer still on the tail of Ambrosa, but now about 1.2 seconds back, so losing ground, if anything, to the Ferrari. As they make their way towards Menacing Skull, the GT4 leader. He's pulled out quite nicely from Barker, is not he? He's had the pace on everybody, I think, today. I think the only the only reason we've seen him battling with anyone has been mistakes. 
Something's getting handy by the GT3s there. Ooh, was that a little light flash there by Gixxer or no? Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to check the replay. Yeah, we do frown on the flashing because it's not very sportsman -like. I just frown on the flashy because too many people use it for different things. Like, it's it's non-communicative, if you know what I mean. Like, I was having a discussion with a driver who was very big on flashing. I was like, you really shouldn't do that. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, shouldn't flash. He's like, but I do it to say, like, good job and stuff. I'm like, that's exactly the problem. Like, you're, you're doing it for, like, the opposite reason that everybody else does it. So it's even more confusing. <laughs> yeah, I've had it when I've had people behind me, you know, and... Um... Uh, sorry, in front of me, and I can see they've flashed the lights in front of me. That's like a thanks for letting me pass, because you see the lights come on at the back, and that's fine, because they're not flashing someone that's in front trying to put them off. The funny thing I find is that people... There are, there are drivers that I've known who complain about not having enough buttons on their steering wheel, but one of their buttons is mapped to the flasher. It's like, why don't you remap that button? Yeah. <laughs> like, just, I think I have got a button map for it, but I have no clue which one it is. It's on my keyboard. I don't touch it. <laughs> I think the only time I ever mapped the uh, flasher to my um, steering wheel was during a brief period where my mic wasn't working. So I was and I was doing I was having a coaching session with somebody back in the ESR Academy season two when I was allowed to compete in the academy and uh, I did map a button so that I could flash my headlights as like yes no Fla flash twice for no flash once for yes sort of thing <laughs> a bit of Morse code going on there basically but it's, aside from that I, I've never I, gu I guess this is my this is my thought on a practical level is James Butler is up on Martin Pater and I'll get to that in a sec because I, I feel like I got to give the Genetta some credit for catching up um, like people are like well it's telling him that I'm there I'm like if there's a guy who can ignore a car in his rear view mirror he's either ignoring you intentionally or he's so unaware that the flashing headlights are not going to do anything <laughs> these are the choices yeah I mean you can turn your mirror oh that's close um, you can turn your mirrors off you know I think some people probably do to avoid James, that James Butler all over the back of Martin Pater considering and, Peyton was uh, nervous he's not doing too bad Still ahead of Butler, doing a good job, hanging on there. I mean, admittedly, the, we, we talked about it before, the Ginetta is not a terribly strong car around here, but James Butler has been doing very well in the series, so he's getting some he's getting some excellent track time with one of the top GT4 drivers in this, uh, in this grid. I must have chased Butler last week for, I don't know, six or seven laps, and I could not catch you. He's a naturally quick man, that one. Mm. And then he rubs it in by being like, yeah, I don't actually practice. <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> he just rocks up and races. It shows sometimes, though. He'll have, like, a race where it's like, you've never been to this track, have you? <laughs> As he's, like, you know, headbutting every wall. <laughs> Ambrosa is still holding off. Like we have a lot of like close battles going on here, but not a lot of um, really tightness. Sean Kenny is taking second place. You know that whole time he was 0. 0.000 behind Andrew Anderson, and the camera never thought to look at him. He's taking second place. <laughs> Set the right star. Van Doren Mullen has gotten past the Baba Ganoush into tenth place. And uh, it looks like Pater's managed to gap out Butler a little bit. Although I imagine that happens on like every straightaway. That Mercedes should have a significant power advantage over the Janetta. Yeah, I think it's got the best top. It's not far off the Porsche, actually. 
portion. The oh, side is and Butler's tr Butler's quest has come to an end. I think if you see beside his name, drive, oh, through, drive through penalty. Car seventeen, the Janetta of James Butler. So that will end the little fight with Martin Pater here. It's a That's shame. going to upset the championship points because I think Butler and Skull were uh, battling at the top. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the problem Skull's in a problem that I was in in a series not terribly long ago where it was a class-based series. There was multiple it was multiple driver classes, same cars on the track, and the problem was is that. I kept beating the guy that I was fighting for the championship with, but he was all. But there were just like not enough cars to put between me and him, so it was like I'm not actually making a lot of headway here, even though I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> and I think that's kind of the problem that Skull's facing today, because there's only three GT4s to put between Skull and Butler, so it's not as um. It's not as impactful as you probably would think looking at the gap between the two here today. I was just looking at the points, actually. Uh, Butler's 10 points ahead of Skull in the uh, championship. So Skull Skull getting a good run here today. Uh, speaking of Skull, he gives up a lap there to Piet Van Doren Mullen, who is... I'd be interested to see what the gap is to Michael Magus, because that would be oh it's 20 seconds never mind never mind nothing yeah, to see here he's not pulling that back <laughs> not not in two minutes now <laughs> so in terms of interesting fights the chronically undershown fight between sean kenny and andrew anderson for second place is 0 0.045 apart can we get a camera on that, please? Uh, Gixer is all over the back of Eugenia. He's lost a spot to Eugenia, actually, so far from overtaking Ambrahosa, he's lost a spot to Xavier Eugenia. So Eugenia up to sixth place, which is probably paying off. Eugenia, of course, the last GT3 to pit. Freshest tires of the bunch. Might be worth a little bit. Anderson is catching Crookie at a very solid rate, I'm noting, but the problem is 8.8 .8 seconds in one lap. That's a, it's a tough sell right there. And uh, he has left Sean Kenny at least, for the time being, uh, 1.5 behind him. So I think, unfortunately, this is really the only battle we have here. This battle between Eugenie, Gixer, and Tazaro for sixth place. <laughs> Gotta wonder how Gixer feels right now with Tazaro coming up behind him. Again, like, total speculation. I, I really should actually go look at the replay and see what happened to them. But the fact that Tazaro was behind Gixer when they both went off has me suspicious. I wonder how he's feeling seeing that BMW coming up behind him as he is currently in a Bavarian sandwich. Well, Gixxer certainly wants that place back. He? he does. Must have made a slight mistake because if, if it was a pace thing, you'd think Eugenie would have driven away from him by like a little bit by now. Not not like huge or anything, but more than the one one six uh, nine gap that they got right now. So this is probably the second last lap. So I think the leader is perhaps... Oh, never mind. Never mind. This is the last lap. All right. Xavier Eugeni. Sixth place ahead of Gixer and Tazaro. RWB Crookie is your winner. Andrew Anderson, Sean Kenny will join him on the podium. Wilk in fourth place. Ambrahosa fifth. Eugeni holds off Gixer and Tazaro for sixth place. And then we will wait for Michael Magus to make his way to claiming ninth place. There he is. The skull's got to drive through. Oh, no. 
And he can't serve that because he's on the last lap. That's gonna be a time. That's gonna be a win for John Barker, I think. I think he could possibly drive through the pits and cross the lot. I'm not sure actually whether that'll stick. I don't think he can. He'd have to pull a Michael Schumacher in 1994 yeah. serving the drive through penalty <laughs> after the race. That was controversial, wasn't it? it? Well, I mean, everything about 1994 was controversial. Let's be honest. That that needs that that's the next F1 movie that needs to be made. 1994. You could call you could even call it option. Uh, what was the launch control option on the Benettons? They weren't supposed to have option eight. No, 13, 13. You just scroll down to 13 in the menu. Option 13. The 1994 story. <laughs> so Skull takes the win on the tarmac. But I yeah, think he's going to lose it in the steward's room because that's the 30-second penalty that should drop him behind both Barker and Edmonds. Should still retain a podium, I think. because he's Yep, there it is. Yeah. Down to third place. Well, that's going to upset and, uh, points because uh, Barker's only two points off Skull, so he's jumped. So it is RWB Crookie, Andrew Anderson, Sean Kenny, Damian Wilk, Nelson. Um, it's Nelson, right? Amber Hosa? Yeah, Nelson. Uh, Xavier Eugeni, Gixer, who I don't know the first name of, uh, Dan Tazaro, Michael Magus, Piet Van Doren Mullen, the Baba Ganoush, and then in GT4 it is John Barker, Martin Edmonds, Menacing Skull with that penalty, Martin Pater, and James Butler. DNFs for Dale Kelleher, RWB Charger, Jamie Reynolds, and a disqualification for Jake Stang. Oh, he got disqualified. Don't know. Really don't know. <laughs> Could not tell you. All right, there we go. That is the video. Green light, green light. So, go, do go. we have updated standings for this uh, series or no? Uh, the points are not done for Paul Ricard until after tomorrow. All right. So we can't. We cannot give a accurate standings update unless I want to do math and I don't really want to do math. Uh, Andrew Anderson was leading the championship in GT3. I suspect he will retain that because today's winner, RWB Crookshanks, was down in eighth place. So unless the gap between first and and uh, second is 70-something points, Anderson will continue to lead. Uh, and in GT4, like you were giving us the updates there, it will probably still be butler what is the gap between i can do i can do this math uh, yeah it's only the top got three. third and yeah so he only made up three points so yeah it'll still be uh it will it will be james butler leading the championship by seven points over menacing Ooh. skull unless we have a penalty for either one of them that would alter that uh pathway I can see uh, Butler coming back strong next week Ooh. to try and regain that. Actually, actually, I need to look. I need to look further down because J- John Barker's right with them. And he yeah, he's two winner, points off. Isn't so it? let's see here. Let's do the math. So Butler should be on three fifty six. And, or pardon me, 356 for Barker. And Butler will be on 359. Oh, so Barker overtakes Skull for second place, based on my math here, and is only three points behind Butler and only four points ahead of Skull. Sounds about right. Whew. It's it's going down to the line in GT4, that's for sure. And GT3 is very tight too. I mean, I, we're, I'm not making as big of a deal out of it, but it has to be said, uh, the top five guys in the standings coming into this race had not won a race in GT3. So um, there is a tremendous amount of parity going on right now uh, in in this in this in this division, and then. I overtook somebody in the championship. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I entered the day tied with Marco Badowski. He was not here. And by default, I move ahead of him. Ah. 
Yeah, I think I've slipped down the points there. All right, so next round is, where is the next round? We are going to Kalami. Oh, boy. That will be interesting. That'll be interesting. Last time we were there in ESR, that was a rough race. So hopefully better be hopefully better behavior this time. So we'll see you next time on the well, I don't know if it'll be this combination, but it, it'll be some commentary combination. Uh, always leave room for it being different. <laughs> Uh, that will join you next time on Tier 2 RWB ESR. Hang on. We put it as ESR RWB on the, on the race app. So there we go. We'll go with ESR yeah. RWB Super Series Tier 2 here uh, from Kyle Almy will be next up. And uh, the season is getting down to the wire with just Monza and Barcelona after this. And both championships are very tight. So for myself, Michael Magus, and my co-commentator, RWB Charger, have a Thank lovely you very much. evening.